Hi fam, welcome to Sweet Truth. Do you dare listen, y'all? I've missed you guys so much. Today is a blessed day. It is a day that the Lord has made, and today I will try to do something that I've never done before, and that is a triple episode day. Meaning, I'm gonna release about three uh, episodes today. Yeah, God willing. <laughs> so, beginning with the first one today will be Psalm 13, 1 to 6. But before we get into that, let us pray. So, Father God, I just want to thank you for this day, Father God. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your goodness, Father God. We praise you, Father God. Honor you and worship your holy name, Father. Thank you for all that you do, for who you are, and for what you have done for us, Father God. You have blessed us. You have favored us. You have protected us, Father God. And so for that, we are saying thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything. Holy Spirit, go before us, intercede for us in this day, and be with us. Surround us, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So, yo, this is the Psalm of David, right? And he's asking all these questions, and one sticks out to me. One sticks out to me, and the reason why it sticks out to me is because um this past week you know i've been uh experiencing you know like you know, um just fighting you know with this thoughts from the enemy you know thoughts of defeat of failure of um just all kinds of negativity you know about my life and my future and the holy spirit taught me something he whispered something very very important to me that i will share with you guys in a little bit but it's like i feel like i'm always in this you know battle with my thoughts you know it's like i'm trying to believe and have faith and sometimes you know the enemy just throws these thoughts of at me of defeat and and failure and you know fear of the future you know what if this doesn't work what if this doesn't take place you know will you, you know will i do this will i get to do this will i get to meet the right people and just stuff like that and it's like i'm always in this wrestle you know because it's like i know what my god says i know only his plans for me you know will come to pass and that he has these great plans for me and so i choose to stick to faith and i was watching uh, to be end the other day, and uh, one of the ladies, uh, I can't remember her name right now, she's uh, one of the preachers, um, and she said, you know, sometimes when it comes to, like, our thoughts and thinking and that, sometimes we have to be intentional, you know, it is not just enough, I guess, to just believe and say, you know, oh, this is what I believe and stuff like that, sometimes you have to be intentional in believing the word of god over your life and declaring his word only his words upon your life you have to be intentional about it you know because just like motivation you know you can't only rely on motivation to like work out and do what you're supposed to do for that day sometimes you just have to put your foot down have the guts to do it you know because Motivation can only get you so far. You cannot depend on motivation. The only thing you can depend on is commitment and dedication. So there's only so far that motivation can get to. But at the end of the day, it will all depend on your commitment and your determination. And so this is what she was trying to say. You know, the same applies to you know, the word of God, and it is not easy to wake up each and every day and, like, pray and just, like, study the word of God and read your devotions. That is not easy. So, just, like, waking out is not easy, you know, you know, like, to grow your muscles or to lose weight or to get strong or to maintain, you know, you have to be committed and determined. That same factor applies to the word of god so you have to be committed you have to be determined you know you have to be intentional when it comes to praying and reading and studying and spending your time with god you have to be just committed and you know dedicated to that you can't depend on 
you know, faith and um, motivation, you know, because that can only get you so far. And that is something that I've had to learn in my own life as well, too. Like, I cannot depend on, like, you know, just saying, like, oh, like, you know, I love God. I'm going to wake up every day. I'm going to read the word, you know, because there are some days that the enemy is going to fight with you, you know, for that for that time and just bring distractions in your mind and just bring you know, chaos around you. And so you have to be intentional. You have to be intentional. Put your foot down. Say, despite this, I'm still going to do it. Amen. And so, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. So the Psalm 13 is like David. So he's asking all these questions, right? And I'm just going to get right into it. So that is Psalm 13, 1 to 6. And it reads, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? And just stopping right there, like, I don't get this. Why is David asking God this when he knows that, first of all, God will never forget you. He does not forget us. And then, second of all, God does not hide his face from us. We are the ones that shy away from the presence of God and try to hide, you know, our shame and our fears and our thoughts and our face from the face of God when all he wants is to be with you and spend time with you. And so, you know, you know, reality, God is the one who's supposed to be asking us this. You know, he's the one who's supposed to be asking, how long will y'all, you know, forget me? How long will y'all hide your face from me? You know, not the other way around. So, I'm just going to dismiss that question real quick because it's like, come on, David, you know, like, <laughs> this is not a vice versa thing, you know. But then, verse 2 is the one, you know, that... um highlighted the whole thing for, for me and it's like it's the one that you know stuck out to me real quick and it reads how long must i wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart so just that part right there how long must i wrestle with my thoughts and this is something that I've been asking God, you know, like, God, like, how long must I wrestle? Because I'm tired of this, you know, I'm tired of, you know, wrestling and wrestling and wrestling with my thoughts and, like, just trying to keep them elated and above all the lies of the enemy and all that. And especially when it comes to, like, thinking, you know, about our future. And so many people have this, you know, fear and quotation of, like, things not working out and stuff like that. And this is what I was telling you guys, uh earlier is that you know i go to a plus where it's like uh uh the the past few recent days of last week it's like the enemy you know was throwing all these thoughts at me and i go to a point where it's like like enough you know like enough like i don't want to do this you know i don't want to fight i'm like I, i'm declaring the peace of god over my mind over my thoughts over my mo you know my emotions and all that and i always pray this is something that i always pray about i pray for my mind and my thoughts and my thinking and i'm like holy spirit take hold of my thoughts holy spirit take hold of my thinking holy spirit just you know captivate me please 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 you know you have given me peace and a sound mind and I was just sitting you know quiet and like just you know uh, trying to call upon the peace of God and my thinking and my thoughts and everything and you know what the Holy Spirit taught me he whispered to me and he said how can you believe the lies of someone who does not know your future you know basically saying like the enemy he was trying to tell me like uh, you know how can you let the enemy lie to you when he doesn't even know your future like how can you let the enemy lie to you about your future that he doesn't know and it was like just right there in that moment and I was like wow like yes like you know and I was like something was changed you know inside me inside of you know, my thinking and all that, and I was like, and I shared this with, with my mom as well, and I was like, wait a minute, like, how come, you know, the enemy thinks that he has the right to bring all these lies, you know, in our minds and in, in our thoughts, and he doesn't even know, 
because the Holy Spirit taught me, and this was so specific and it was so clear. It was like, don't let the enemy lie to you about your future, about your life that he does not even know. That's like someone telling you you have a red car when you don't even have a red car. Or that you have a regular car when you don't even have that. So it's like you believe in that. It's like you're blindly falling into that and you're blindly believing in the plans, you know, in the lives of the enemy. And it's like, why would you do that? You know, like, why would you blindly, you know, listen to this? Or why would you blindly believe that? You know, why would you blindly follow, you know, the uh, defeatful, you know, thoughts of the enemy that he tries to implant in your mind? Like, that you're blindly believing. By believing that stuff, by listening to it, it's like you're blindly falling into that. And the worst part about it all is that he does not even know. <laughs> He does not even know. So it's like, why, why let someone tell you something about you that they don't even know? I mean, would you do that? Would you let, you know, that's like um, allowing a friend to tell you about your future and like how everything is going to play out when they don't even know. When they don't even know. <laughs> and so that will forever stick with me, you know, and that changed everything for me. and. And I just remember, you know, I'm, I, I was so happy and, you know, I was just like, on a high, I'm like, yes, God, like, yes, Holy Spirit. And I started, you know, uh, speaking against the enemy, speaking against his lies, you know, and all the thoughts he was trying to bring. And I was like, wait a minute, like, no, you don't get to tell me this. You don't get to, you know, make me believe in any of the stuff that you say and in, in any of the lies you are the father of lies and you don't even know. So you're not going to tell me about my future that you don't even know you're not going to tell me about a future that you don't even know so i couldn't wait to share this with you guys because i want you guys to be encouraged in knowing that whenever you have this you know defeatful thoughts and like thoughts about your future especially you know uh thoughts of the negative you know because when the enemy is bringing these lies and like thoughts to your mind they're not good. It's like all negativity, you know, and it's like, I'm so against negative vibes. I'm like, I don't want no negative vibes around me, you know. Plus, uh, you know, I'm an introvert, so I try to stay in, you know, positivity and all that. And luckily for me, like, I'm blessed with, like, positive vibes, you know. I'm naturally, like, a, a positive going, you know, just this goofy person and, like, it's hard to get me down, you know, so that's why I I think, like, for me, the enemy has been trying hard to, like, get me to a place of, like, defeat, but, like, I never stay there, you know, like, I've got the joy of the Lord in my heart, you know, and, like, that is something that I always, you know, say to myself, and it's, like, sweet truth, like, you've got the joy of the Lord, you know, in your heart, and the joy of the Lord is your strength, and the joy of the Lord, indeed, has been my strength throughout and throughout, and so, if you guys are experiencing the something so I don't know who's, you know, wrestling with their thoughts and all that and who the enemy is trying uh, so hard to make you believe, you know, negativity about the future, about your future and even the future of your friends and family. You know, it might not even be about you, but about someone that you know, you know, about your family members, about your friends and I'm here with this testimony of my testimony to encourage you that he doesn't know. So don't believe, you know, all the lies of the enemy of something that he himself doesn't know. I'm here to tell you, you know, the Holy Spirit, I mean, he, does, he doesn't know your future. So I'm here to tell you as well that he does not know your future. He does not know the plans that God has for you. Only God knows. Only God knows. So don't let anyone, or oh, especially the enemy, tell you about your future, tell you about your life that he does not even know. He doesn't know you. He doesn't know you. Therefore, he does not know your future. Please understand this. If there is one thing you should get from this entire, you know, episode is that he does not know 
you and he does not know your future so don't blindly believe the lies don't blindly believe the negativity that he himself does not know that is this is the truth this is the whole entire sweet truth it is the sweetest truth I've ever known in knowing that he does not know me he does not know my future therefore from that day onwards I was like the enemy will never ever lie to me about my future about a future about the future of my loved ones and friends because he does not know them therefore he does not know their future and this was so clear you know more clear than most of the things you know that have been spoken to me by the Holy Spirit and it's like don't believe that don't do that don't get to that place of defeat of negativity because of the lies of someone of the enemy this stupid devil that does not even know you amen so be encouraged yo okay moving on verse 3 Look on me and answer, O oh Lord, my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep in death. My enemy will say I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. So I guess he must have been so defeated, you know, at this time, David, in his life. Because just look at this, is going to so much extreme in, like, describing his situation for God. Or rather to God and it's like no like <laughs> David this is one thing I think David struggled so much like you know he was a man of faith as we know him to be a great and like just a man of God and all that but at the end of the day you know he was human as well too and it's just you know so surreal just knowing that the majority of uh, things that he went through are things that so many of us go through currently. And, you know, just being at that place of defeat. But, you know, one thing that I love about David is that at the end of the day, he never stayed in that place. He never stayed in that place. Unlike most people, you know, once uh, the enemy brings all these, you know, thoughts of defeat and everything, they kind of like stay in that place. But the good thing about David is that he never stayed in that place. And verses 5 and 6 are the evidence of that. Listen to what he says. He says, But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. So you see the difference between David and men today and like people today. It's like, why is it so easy, you know, like when the enemy brings all this, you know, negativity and defeat towards us. It's like, why is it so easy for us to like stay in that place? And people can even stay in that place, you know, that bondage of negativity and bad thoughts, you know, for years and years and years and years and years. But as for David, like, at the end of the day, he, like, he knew who God is, you know, like, his father, he knew who his friend is, you know, and he's like, but I trust in you. I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation, you know. So, like, learn from David. Like, yes, he had all these, you know, thoughts of defeat, negativity going on around him because he was just going through, through so much at that period of time, you know, but... If there is one thing we can learn from him is that he never stayed in that place of negativity, of that place of lies from the enemy. You know, he never stayed in that place of defeat. So do not stay in that place of defeat. Let your heart rejoice in the salvation that God brings. Let your trust be in God. Let your trust be in his unfailing love. Because only God's love is unfailing. And then sing praises to the Lord. Sing praises to the Lord because He is good and He is so good to you. Just because you don't see it, just because you don't understand it, just because you you know you haven't got into that place yet 
of where you can say that God has been so good to me doesn't mean he hasn't been good to you. It just means that, you know, you don't know yet. And if you pray and ask God, he will show you and he will bring you to that place to where you can say, God, I will sing praises to you for you have been so good to me. And I promise you, when you think, sit down in that quiet place and just like think to yourself and start to ponder upon, you know, your thoughts and everything. Not thoughts of defeat, you know, but, the, you know, just think about the situations that God has helped you through and, you know, the things that he has brought you out of and everything that he's done for you, you know, you're going to see that in all these years, throughout whatever you may have faced, that God has been good to you. God has been good to you. So my encouragement to you is, I hope that you guys, you know, come to a place where you can trust in God and trust in His unfailing love, at least. At least trust in His unfailing love. And so this is what I love so much about David, you know, that despite, you know, all these questions and, you know, the enemy really tried hard to bring him down and everything. At the end of the day, he's like, I will trust you, God. I will trust you, God. You have been so, so good to me. And so I am so grateful to God. I am so grateful to our Father. I am so, 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 so grateful. And if you are willing to pray the repentance prayer with me, then please repeat after me. Dear God, I know I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sins and that you raised him to life. I want to trust him as my savior. And follow him as Lord. From this day forward. Guide my life. And help me to do your will. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. And you know, if you pray that prayer, you know, the angels dance and they rejoice. You know, y'all don't know, like, they dance and they rejoice. And God says, welcome, my son, my daughter. I am so, so proud of you. Oh, my God, this has been so amazing, you guys. I just feel so great. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. Your be blessed. Be encouraged. And be fearless and have a blessed day.